Welcome, let's discuss how we can use the sign and cosine ratios. One application of the sine and cosine ratios is to find the sides in a right triangle. Let's take a look at the following examples. In the example on the left, we are looking for the bottom side. Let's start by identifying our reference angle, which we have it here as 39 degrees. And then let's label our triangle using this reference angle. Opposite of 90 degrees, that's our hypotenuse. Opposite of the reference angle, that's the opposite side. And the bottom sign is our adjacent. And to identify the function that we'll be using, either sine or cosine, we need to look into our triangle and see what's the information that we want and see what's the information that we have. We want to figure out the length of the adjacent. And we have information about the hypotenuse. It makes sense for us to use cosine because cosine is defined as adjacent, which is what we want, over the hypotenuse, which is what we have. So let's plug that information. The cosine of 39 degrees, it's equivalent to the adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 7. On the left hand side, let's divide it over 1. This way we can see that we want to cross multiply. So we're going to have 1 times x, and then we're going to get 7 times the cosine of 39 on the right hand side. So now we have an expression for x. x is equivalent to 7 times the cosine of 39. And now let's use our calculator to find the value of this expression. Let's start by checking that our calculator is in degree mode. So let's press mode. Note that it's in degree, so we can continue. Let's press second quit. And now let's put 7 times cosine. We can find it here. So let's press cosine and 39 inside the parentheses. So now we have a result, 5.44. Let's take a look at the example in the right. Let's start by identifying our reference angle, which we have it here, as 40 degrees. Let's label our triangle, opposite of 90 degrees, that's the hypotenuse. Opposite of reference angle, that's the opposite. And the side that is left is the adjacent. And now let's think about what is it that we want and what is it that we have. We have information about the hypotenuse, and we want information about the opposite. Then it makes sense for us to use sine, because sine has been defined as opposite over hypotenuse, which is the information that we want and what we have. So let's set this up. The sine of 40 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 19. The left hand side, let's set it over 1, so we can see that we need to do cross multiplication. So we're going to have 1 times x equals to 19 times sine of 40. On the left hand side, 1 times x is just x. In the right hand side, let's just write it as 19 sine of 40. And now let's use our calculator to find this value. So now we're going to press 19. Let's press the sign button, and inside the parentheses, let's place 40. Don't forget to close the parentheses, and now let's press enter. So now that we conclude that x is equals to 12.21, let's take a look at another example. We're going to approach it the same way. Let's start by identifying the reference angle, which is 46, and now let's label our triangle. Now let's think about what is it that we have and what we want. We have the length of the opposite and we want the length of the hypotenuse. So based on this information, we can decide that we need to use the sine function because it's opposite over hypotenuse. On the numerator is what we have and the denominator is what we want. So let's set this up. The sine of 46 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, where the opposite is 8, and the hypotenuse is x. Let's cross multiply to solve for x. So we're going to have 1 times 8, 
And then we're going to have x times the sine of 46. Now to properly solve for x, we notice that we're multiplying two expressions. So to cancel the second expression, we need to divide. So let's divide sine of 46 on both sides. So now we have an expression for x, where x is equal to 8 divided by the sine of 46. Let's find the value of this expression using our calculator. So on the number we're going to have 8, and then we're going to divide by the sine of 46. Don't forget to close the parentheses. And now we have a result. We know that x is equivalent to 11.1. .1. Let's delete this information to have space for the second problem. Let's start by identifying our reference angle, which is 74. Let's label this triangle using this information. And to decide which function we're going to use, let's identify what is it that we have and what is it that we want. We have the length of the adjacent side. And we want to know the length of the hypotenuse. Then for this example, we're going to use the cosine function. Because it's been defined as adjacent over hypotenuse, let's set this up. The cosine of 74, it is equal to adjacent, which is 19, divided by the hypotenuse, which is x. Let's set it over 1, so we can see that we need to cross multiply. On the first multiplication, we'll have 1 times 19. And on the second multiplication, we're going to have x times the cosine of 74. Notice that we're multiplying. So to cancel out the cosine of 74, to leave the x by itself, we're going to do the opposite, which is division. Let's divide by the cosine of 74. Now we can say that x is equivalent to 19 on the numerator, and cosine of 74 in the denominator. And to find the value of this expression, let's use our graphing calculator. So now we're going to press 19, divided by cosine, which we can see it here, and inside the parentheses, let's press 74. Let's close the parentheses. So our conclusion is that x has a length of 68.9. Hello, if you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.